Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Good, good, good. So we're going to talk about hair today. And first, I'm going to give a little introduction of myself. So my name is Kiara Griffin. I am 26 years old. I'm a hairstylist. Um, I've been doing hair since I was like nine years old. But I haven't been doing it professionally that long. That's just when the interest started. So this is a picture of me between the age, I don't know exactly how old I am at this age, in this picture. So I was around eight or nine when I started finding an interest in hair. So my mom used to do my hair. I have several sisters. And one day I was like, um, mom, I'm tired of these little ponytails you're giving me. Can I please do my own hair? So she was like, okay, if you think you got this, go ahead and go in the bathroom and you can do it yourself. So that's what I did. Well, I attempted to do my own hair. It didn't go so well because it was my first time doing my hair and I have a lot of hair, so it was a little bit hard to manage, but I tried. And then I used to always watch her and my older sister do my younger sister's hair, and that's kind of how I learned from watching. And then I would practice on my younger sister, practice on baby dolls. I started babysitting like when I was probably 11 years old, and I would do hair like or do the kids hair that I babysat. So moving on to college. So when I went to college, I went to, I was homeschooled, let me backtrack a little bit. I was homeschooled from kindergarten all the way through the fifth grade. And then I went to public school in sixth grade. And I, then I went to public school through high school. So I've always loved doing hair, like I mentioned before, like since I was really, really little, but I kind of felt like I needed to do something different. Like I was like, I don't think I can really do hair as a job. Like, I don't really think I could make a living off of that. I probably need to do something that everybody else does. Does anybody have an idea of like what they want to be when they grow up? Like by a show of hands, anybody want to be like a doctor when they grow up or a lawyer when they grow up? So a lot of times I feel like people, people will make you think that you have to do a certain thing. And so the things that maybe, like for me, I love to do hair, but I felt like I had to do something where I was either working in an office or at a desk or in the hospital or something like that. And those are all great jobs, but we all have passions and desires that show up when we're young. So for me, doing hair that showed up when I was like, nine years old and a lot of us in here are really young and so we're never too young to know what it is that God has put in it put on the inside of us that we enjoy doing and that could that we can do as we grow up so I went to college straight out of high school and I did not go to college for hair I went to college to study social work does anybody know what social work is by a show of hands so social work is a job there's a lot of different jobs you can do with social work, but you essentially you're helping people. So you may be helping kids who are in foster care or adoption. You may be helping kids in high school as like a counselor, helping them talk through their issues. There's a lot of different things you can do with social work. So I always have had a heart to help people. Um, and so I was like, well, because I don't think I can do hair as a job, I'll just go to college and go to college for social work. So that's what I did, but as you can see in this picture here, this is me in my dorm room doing, what am I doing in this picture? Does it look like to you guys? Hair. Hair, exactly. So I was in college, but deep down inside, I really wanted to do hair. So you could always find me, and don't mind my face in there. I know I look kind of like angry or something, but I just love doing hair, and I get really focused when I'm doing hair, so that's my focus face. So you could always find me, in my dorm room doing hair at somebody's house, doing hair, babysitting somebody's child, doing hair. So even though I went to college for social work, I was always doing hair and I actually ended up going to hair school. So to backtrack a little bit again, I am from Michigan. Is anybody in here by a show of hands from somewhere other than Georgia? Like you live in Georgia, but you were born somewhere else? Anybody from Michigan by chance in here? No? Okay. So 
Like I said, I'm 26 years old, but I was born and raised in Michigan. And I moved to Georgia almost six years ago now. I was 20 when I moved here. So I went to college for three years in Michigan. I was going to transfer to, co to a college here and finish school, but God had other plans and I ended up looking into some hair school opportunities because college costs a lot of money. How many people know that college costs a lot of money? <laughs> and college is great and you can get lots of funding and stuff, but sometimes when you move from one state to another or if you're going to a college in a different state, it can cost even more money. So that's kind of what happened. I moved from Michigan to Georgia to go to college. I mean, I moved from Michigan to Georgia with my family. I planned on finishing college in Georgia, but it was going to cost me a lot more money that I did not have. But it kind of was God's way of setting me up to do what I was purposed to do in the first place, which was hair. So because I wasn't going to be able to go to college because I didn't have the money at the time, I started looking into hair school, and I ended up going to hair school the same month that I moved to Georgia. So I moved to Georgia in 2015, August of 2015, and I went to hair school that same month at the end. So this is a picture of me. I went to a hair school called Empire Beauty School. Has anybody ever heard of that school? There's a lot of, there's like several locations all over. I went to one in Kennesaw. Does anybody live in Kennesaw? Oh, one person, okay. <laughs> so I went to the Empire in Kennesaw, and this picture is actually a picture that my wonderful brother took of me the day that I completed hair school. So it took me exactly a year to finish hair school, and it was a great, great learning experience. Um, I made a lot of connections while I was in hair school, and then I also got connected to the first salon that I worked at out of hair school. So this is my last day at hair school, but we did like an official, an official graduation ceremony, and this is me at my graduation ceremony after completing hair school. Okay, so this is my first salon, and that is actually one of my younger sisters in that picture I was doing her hair. So the very first salon I worked at I started off right out of hair school, literally probably like a week or two after I graduated, and I started as an assistant. So I was assisting the owner, which was great because I was able to learn a lot from her, and um, she also was the owner of this salon. So I learned a lot about how to run a business and how to be a business owner, not knowing which I'll get to later, that I was going to later open up my own business. Does anybody in here know anyone, like your parents or your aunt or your uncle or your cousin or a friend who has their own business? Awesome. Does anybody in here want to be a business owner or have their own business when they grow up? Awesome. Okay, so moving on. So the salon that I was at, the first salon, I was there for about two years. And I learned and grew so much while I was there. So if anybody ever had a moment, probably maybe in school or in a sport or something like that, where you feel kind of like challenged or uncomfortable and your teacher or your coach is like pushing you to do something that you've never done, but towards the end of it, you feel better, even though you were uncomfortable at the end, I mean, uncomfortable at the beginning or it was hard at the beginning, after you learned whatever your teacher was teaching you or learned whatever your coach was showing you and mastered it, you felt more confident about it, right? Is anybody, has that ever happened to anybody? So that happened to me when I was in the first salon I was at, okay? So I love braiding hair. That was the first thing that I started doing when I started doing hair, braiding hair. Anybody have braids in here? I see a lot of ladies with braids. So I love doing braids. So when I was in hair school, I was like, I'm only going to do braids. I don't want to do anything else, and I'm only going to do kids' hair. Like I shared earlier, I was a kid myself when I started doing hair, so I love to do kitty styles. And then I also babysat a lot, so I was always doing kids' hair. So I was like, I'm in hair school, and I'm learning how to do all these different styles, but I'm only going to do kids' hair, right? Yeah, it didn't go that way. So when I went to the first salon I was at, 
I had to branch out and do a lot of things that made me very, very uncomfortable. The owner pushed me and she helped me, but she pushed me to do things that I wasn't used to doing and that made me uncomfortable. But I'm so thankful that she did that because it was bigger than just styling people's hair. For me, it was helping people, right? Which, is, which goes back to why I went to school for social work because my heart has always been to help people and God kind of brought helping people and doing hair together because there's a lot of times where I'll have people in my chair who they can't wear their real hair. Their, hair, their real hair may be short or they may have hair loss from a medical issue and so they have to add hair for, to their head so that they can you know, still have a style and still feel pretty. How many people feel pretty when they get their hair done? How many people makes them feel better when you get your hair done, right? When your hair is looking nice, you feel better about yourself, right? So I, um, I started learning other styles and I was so thankful because I didn't realize how many people were gonna cross my path that I would be helping, not just doing their hair, but helping them feel better about themselves by giving them a hair service that maybe they would, that if I was only doing kids braids and braiding in general, I wouldn't be able to do. So the lady at the first salon, she helped me do sewing. She taught me a, t a, um, a technique on how to straighten um, natural hair without like damaging it. Has anybody ever had like their hair straightened? And your hair is like naturally, is everybody in here have naturally curly hair? Like if you wet your hair, it's curly, right? So sometimes people put so much heat on your hair, and boys, you guys may not understand this if you never got your hair straightened. But for a girl, if you have curly hair and you get your hair straightened, you'll use like a blow dryer and a flat iron, and those tools have a lot of heat. And some people put so much heat that your curls may not come back when you wet them, when you re-wet it, but you don't want that to happen. So at the salon, she taught me how to style people's hair and straighten it, without damaging it so that when they wet it again, they had their curls. So those were things that I wasn't used to doing because I was so used to braiding and doing kids' hair. So I learned a lot at that salon to help everybody. So all of the hair knowledge and then all of the business knowledge that I learned from the first salon that I was at, it was very uncomfortable. I was pushed outside of my comfort zone, but it helped me to be a better stylist and it helped me to be a future business owner, which I am today. So this is when I transitioned. This is a picture of my salon suite um, name. My, the name of my business is called Kiera's Chair. And then this is a picture of my name and then my salon suite. So a salon suite, does anybody know what a salon suite is by a show of hands? A salon suite is kind of like a salon, but it's like a mini a mini salon, essentially. So it's like a small room where you, has everybody been in a salon in here before? Okay, so in a salon you have a shampoo bowl, typically you have a shampoo chair, a mirror, a station, and then all of your styling tools. And salons can vary in size, big, small, medium, but a salon suite is like a really small room where you have just you and your client, a mirror, a chair, a shampoo bowl, a styling chair, a dryer, and all those things. So I moved into a salon suite and started my own business. So I took a step of faith, didn't know what it was going to be like to open up my own salon, but I was like, let me just take this step of faith and try it. You know, sometimes you just have to try things out and see if it'll work. So that's what I did, and it was a learning experience, but I had a little bit more growing to do. So has anybody ever tried to do something like maybe you wanted to be a cheerleader or a basketball player, but you kind of haven't, hadn't done it before, or maybe you tried to like paint your nails or build something, but you really hadn't done it before, so the first time you did it, it was kind of, it worked out okay, but not as good as you thought it would be. So I opened up my salon and I kind of, like I said, I took a step of faith and I had learned a lot from my old salon, I mean my first salon, but there was still a lot I had to learn. So I kind of hit a few bumps in the road and so I ended up closing my suite because I needed to go back and learn a little bit more. 
while I was in my own suite, because I didn't really have the clientele, so clientele are the clients and the people that come and sit in your chair, and you need a clientele, a large clientele, to make enough money to provide for yourself, to pay your bills, to buy food, and all those type of things. So I didn't really have a whole lot of clients. So what I did is I started traveling. So I'm from Michigan, right? You guys remember me saying that? So I traveled to Michigan a couple of times because I know a lot of people in Michigan and I have a lot of connections there. So I traveled there and I used somebody else's salon space and I did some hair there to make some extra money because my salon business was a little bit slow. So I ended up closing my suite, like I said, because I needed a little more, um, I just need a little more guidance and a little more help and experience on how to run a business. And how many people know it's okay to mess up? It's okay to make mistakes. Has anybody ever made a mistake or is everybody here perfect? Okay. Just making sure because I'm definitely not perfect, right? So it's okay to make mistakes. That's how you learn. Like when you're in school, do you ever, I know this happened to me a lot, do you ever feel like you just have to know everything. Like you're doing a math problem or you're writing something in English and you make a mistake and you get really frustrated. Does anybody ever get like super frustrated when they make a mistake in school? That was me all the time. But I realized, how can I learn if I don't make a mistake? When you make a mistake, that's a great opportunity to learn because you can use where you made a mistake and for the future, do it differently and you can learn from doing that because if you do it right, if you're always well, you won't ever do everything right. But if you don't make mistakes, you can't learn or know how to do it better the next time. So when I opened up my salon, I, I won't say like I made a mistake, but it just didn't work, work out quite like I thought it would the first time. And that's okay. I still had a lot to learn. So I have written here, bump in the road. Sometimes we hit a bump in the road, but that doesn't mean we pull over and we just stop driving. Have you ever been in, does anybody in here drive? Oh, okay, I didn't think you guys were driving. I hope you're not driving. You're driving? Oh, wow. So even though a lot of you probably don't have your license in here, you guys have been in a car before, right? Or you ride around with your parents or your aunt or your uncle or your cousin, right? So have you ever been in the car driving and then you hit a bump all of a sudden? Does that ever happen to anybody or just me? So you might hit a bump in the road. So if you ever hit a bump in the road, have you ever noticed, like, did you just pull over? Did your parents just pull over to the side of the road? You guys just sat there forever and you just didn't drive anymore? Or did you, like, bump and, oh, well, that was a little bump, and then keep going? Did you keep going when you hit that bump? Raise your hand if your parents kept going. Because if you hit a bump, that didn't prohibit you from driving. It was just a little, it, it just slowed you down a little bit, right? So that's kind of what happened to me. So I was in my salon suite, and then I hit a little bump in the road. My clients weren't really where I wanted them to be. I wasn't making the money that I needed to make. And so I hit a little bump in the road, but I didn't just stop. I didn't say, you know what, forget this. I quit. I'm not doing hair anymore. I didn't do that. I just said, okay, God, what can I do? to help myself move forward and, and um, learn from this and, and grow from this. So what I did is I looked into some salons and I was like, I'll go back into someone else's salon where I can learn from them, I can grow working alongside of them, and eventually down the road, I can reopen my salon. So I was in my salon suite 2017. So I graduated hair school 2015. I'm gonna backtrack a little. Graduated hair school 2015, went to the first salon that I worked in out of hair school 2015 to 2017. Then 2017, I was in my salon suite, but only for like nine months. So then at the end of 2017, I went back into a regular salon up until right now. So this is me at someone else's salon where she specialized in a lot of different things that I did not specialize in. So I learned a lot from her and she also was a business owner. So even though I had a little bump in the road, it actually helped me to get further in my hair journey 
because I learned other things that I didn't know. She was a business owner as well, just like the lady who owned the first salon that I worked in. So I learned even more about running a business, working with her. And I got to connect with some great people and build my clientele. I built up my clientele almost double what I was doing in my own salon suite. So this is where I am now, but I am actually reopening my own salon. So <laughs> the way God works is he's just awesome and he works everything out for our good. So the salon that I'm currently at, the owner, I've been there for about two, um, two-ish, three-ish years now. And the owner actually got married last year and she ended up moving. So she still owns the salon, but she hasn't been able to like manage it and run it the way she wants to because she's not physically there. So she decided to close the salon, which left all of the stylists there wondering what we were going to do. So that's a whole story in and of itself, but what happened is God worked it out and pressed it on my heart to take a step of faith again and reopen my salon. So that is what I just have decided to do. And since being there before, I've learned so much more. I've grown so much more. I've built up a clientele, and that's why it's good to make mistakes sometimes or for things not to go as planned because then you know when you do it again what to do differently. So because this isn't my first time being in a salon on my own, I know what to do differently. I know what didn't work last time, and I know what I've learned on how to run the business better from being around other business owners. So now we're going to talk a little bit about hair care, and then I'm going to wrap it up a little, okay? So I have a cute little video, it's only like probably like 10 seconds. And we're gonna talk about moisturizing your hair. So it's so, so, so important to moisturize your hair, whether you have straight, curly, blonde, brown, short, long, whether you're a boy or a girl, it's important to moisturize your hair, okay? So this morning I washed my hair and I put it in a ponytail so you guys could see, cause I wear my hair, mostly like in a bun or sometimes I wear it twisted, but I left it in a ponytail today so you guys could see that it kind of looks like wet and the hair is curly and I moisturized it with this product right here. It's called Curly Kids. And this is actually for kids, but anybody really can use it. So my little brother uses this. He has like really curly hair, but his hair is like a little bit looser than mine. I use it. I know a lady who's way older than me that uses it. So it's called Curly Kids, but the reason I like it is because it's on here it says mixed textured hair. So all different type of textures can use this. And I'm going to pass this around. Don't put your fingers in it, <laughs> but you guys can smell it and kind of see the consistency of it, okay? So pass it just like behind you when you're done. So I just want you guys to kind of see what a moisturizer is. There's a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of different type of moisturizers. And this is a kind of in-between moisturizer. You guys put lotion on when you get out the shower or out the bath. Raise your hand if you put lotion or cream or something on. And the purpose for that is so that your skin doesn't get dry, right? So you're, you want to do the same thing with your hair because if you don't put any moisture in it, it'll get dry and then it actually can break because if it's dry, it's kind of fragile, it's kind of brittle and weak, and so it can break. So does anybody in here want their hair to break or do they want it to grow? Raise your hand if you want your hair to break. Raise your hand if you want your hair to grow. So my younger sister, guys, she is the same age I was, nine when I started doing hair, and this girl has been trying to do somebody's hair since she was like two. She would sit in her playpen and take her bottle, pour it in her hand, and play with her hair and try to style it. So she's nine now, and she does, my mom lets her do her own hair like before she goes to school. She's always asking to play in my hair or my mom's hair or my other sister's. So this was like a week or so ago. So I let her play in my hair 
and she was twisting it. So this is her showing you guys. She was doing like her own little YouTube video, I guess, guys. It's only like 15 seconds, but I'm gonna play this and you can see her moisturizing my hair, combing it, and getting ready to twist it, okay? Super quick. I just wanted to show you guys a little picture of how you can moisturize your hair and then that you're never too young to do things that you love or enjoy. If you have things that you're passionate about that you like to do, you can start now. You don't have to wait till you get older. You may not be perfect at it now, but we're never perfect at anything that we start. We have to learn and grow and practice, practice, practice. So if there's anything that you enjoy doing now and your parents give you that space and allow you to do, to do it, do it now. You're never too old. I mean, you're never too young. Okay, so now we're going to talk about protecting your hair, okay? So just as important as it is to moisturize, it's important to protect your hair. So just like we talked about earlier, how your hair can break if it's not moisturized, your hair can also break if it's not protected. And this goes for any hair texture, boy, girl, straight, curly. You want to protect your hair and protect it when you're, what does it look like she's doing in that last picture? Sleeping, right. So when you go to bed, you wanna try not to just lay on your head. I mean, lay, well, you wanna lay on your head. I don't think we lay on our feet or our elbows or anything like that. But you don't wanna just lay on your pillow without maybe a silk pillowcase or silk blankets or a silk scarf, or for boys, a silk do-rag or a silk cap. So raise your hand in here if you have either a bonnet or a silk scarf or a pillow or a do-rag or something at home that you wear when you go to sleep. Okay, a lot of us. So these are some pictures of a couple people in my family with their hair protected. So every night, if you can, Try to put something on your hair to protect it. And I emphasize silk because silk, that, that protects your hair and your hair can, not peacefully, but it can rest on your hair and it's gentle. If you put like a, a, um, a handkerchief or you just lay on your cotton pillow, that can cause your hair to break because for one, that sucks the moisture out of your hair. And then two, if it's sucking the moisture out of your hair, what's gonna happen? It can cause your hair to break. So you wanna really protect your hair when you're sleeping. So in the first picture, that's my younger sister who you saw earlier doing my hair. She wanted a bonnet so bad. So I bought her this little cute pink bonnet. She picked that out. In the next picture, that's my brother-in-law. That's my sister's husband. And he has a do-rag on. And that's what he uses to wear and protect his hair when he's sleeping. And he's holding, this. that's kind of an old picture, but he's holding his son to the right and my nephew, my other nephew to the left. They're both much bigger now. They're like four and two, so that's a little bit of an old picture. But I wanted to show you a picture of a guy protecting his hair as well, because boys, you guys want to protect your hair too, okay? It's not just girls. Anybody who has hair on their head, okay? That next picture is my one of my other sisters. That's actually my sister who I showed you earlier who was in my chair at the first salon. So she was like seven in that picture. This picture was pretty recent. So she probably was like 12 in this picture. And she has like a silk scarf on while she's laying on the couch. She probably had just woke up and hadn't taken her scarf off yet. And then that last picture it's kind of a funny picture because I don't know if you can tell because it's close up, but that's my niece and she's only like one and I had just did her hair and then she fell asleep. So I tied my giant scarf on her head <laughs> because I didn't want her hair to get messed up. And then you're, it's never too early to start protecting your hair, especially babies sometimes don't really have a lot of hair, but she actually has a head full of hair at one. And even if you don't, that can help it to not break off. So if you have little siblings at home, you should go home and tell your mom to buy a headscarf for your, your one-year-old sister or brother so that their hair can grow and be healthy. Okay, now quickly I'm just going to talk about the importance of taking care of yourself. So this is a picture of me right before I took the photo in the very first slide. That's the photographer in the back, and that's me with my hair done and my makeup done, okay? 
So I don't really wear makeup like that. And I also don't really, even though I'm a hairstylist, I don't straighten my hair often because for one, I'm always doing everybody else's hair. So I don't really have time to straighten my own. And then for two, it's just easier to throw my hair back in a ponytail and my hair doesn't always last straight because my hair typically gets really oily. That's like a whole nother topic. But for this picture, I had to get my makeup done, do my hair, so I could look a certain way to take this professional picture. Have you guys, you know, when you go to school and you take your school pictures, do you usually dress a little nicer and like get your hair done fresh before you, or get a fresh haircut before you take a picture at school? Yeah, so when you're gonna take, when you're getting ready to take a picture, like a professional picture, a lot of times you have to dress up and do something different than you normally do. So I, I titled this Taking Care of Yourself because how you look on the outside makes a world of a difference with how the picture is gonna look and then as a business owner, how someone is gonna perceive your business. If I would have taken a picture, now the picture that I took at the beginning of this is on the salon website. So if I would have took a picture with my head scarf on, no makeup, I had just woken up, I had just waken up, do you think that picture would have given the same message to people as it, as it would if I had my hair and makeup done. How many people think I should have wore a picture with a bonnet on my head on the website? Now what about the picture at the very beginning with my makeup done and my hair done? Does that seem more appropriate? How many people think that was the right choice for the website, right? So it's so important to take care of yourself and how you look on the outside, but even more importantly, on the inside. So you have to, have to, have to take care of yourself in your business, in school, in work, whatever you do. A lot of, a lot of you guys are just in school now. You're, you don't have jobs and stuff yet. But it's so important to make sure that whatever you're doing, you take care of yourself first. So even though it was so important for, important for me to get my makeup done and my hair done so that I could look right and I could draw clients, it's even more important for me to make sure I'm taking care of the inside of myself, taking care of my spirit, spending time with God, going to church, reading the Bible, spending time with people who can pour into me because what's on the inside is way more important than what's on the outside. So what you guys are doing here with Mr. Newton and Miss Marlene at Josiah Kids is so huge because you guys are taking care of the inside of you. You're taking care of your spirit, your, your um growing in your walk with God and learning all type of different things. And it's going to be so important for your life now and your journey as you continue to grow. Because I've spent a lot of time, more time than I even spent on the outside, taking care of my insides, going to classes at my church to help me grow as a Christian, to help me grow in my walk with God, to help me grow in how I love others and how I treat people. Because it's no good if I look like that on the outside, but when someone sits in my chair, I have an attitude, I'm being rude, I'm not loving them, I'm not showing them the love of God, right? So I wanted to really share and make a point that above everything that we've talked about today, like taking care of your hair, the outside, moisturizing, and all that stuff. It's so much more important to take care of your inside and what you do behind closed doors in your private time, um, when you're spending time with God, when you're going to church, when you're worshiping, when you're doing things like Josiah kids or being involved in children's church at church or youth ministry or whatever you do, because that's what's going to show way beyond how you look on the outside, okay? Thank <music> you.